Future Boy Zoltron, the latest episode of Steven Universe. An episode that I really only have like one or two things to say about it. Not that it wasn't a good episode, but just because I really only feel like there's one or two things to say about it. Three things. I thought of a third thing. It's, it's an important one, too. Anyway, it's a very simple premise. Smiley drags an old coin-operated fortune-telling machine out from somewhere in storage, intending to see if it still works, and then put it to work making money for him at Funland. Steven accidentally breaks it, so to make it up for Smiley, he has to play the character of Future Boy Zoltron in the machine cabinet until this very expensive machine is paid off. And I say it's one of those fortune-telling machines. It's not like the crystal ball fortune-telling machines like you see occasionally. It's literally this robot boy who his whole character is that he's been to the future, so he knows the future. But, of course, it just gives lucky numbers, like all fortune-telling machines actually do. But with Steven playing the part of Zoltron, it has people come up to him, people from Beach City, people he knows. He is able to give them real advice about their potential futures. He's all happy with himself for having helped so many people until he comes across, or I should say he's come across by, this kind of ratty-looking sad sack of a guy. And because Steven doesn't know him, because this guy's from out of town, he's not able to actually give the guy any good advice. And he seems to be wanting to reconnect with someone, someone in town, and he doesn't know if he should actually approach them. And Steven can't help him. So Garnet comes along, gives Steven her future vision for a short period of time, as she has a couple times before, and lets him use it to try to help this guy. Turns out he was part of a duo act with Mr. Smiley years ago, where they were Mr. Smiley and Mr. Frowny, the other guy being Mr. Frowny, and that they had a falling out, and now Frowny wants to reconnect with Smiley. And after Steven accidentally scares the guy away, he just kind of flat out tells Mr. Smiley what's going on, and they reconnect, and it's just, it's an adorable scene. It was a scene that was payoff enough that it made the entire episode worth it in my mind. I just thought it was really cute, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit more in a minute. And I know I haven't been going through the entire plot beat for beat like that in my reviews for a while, but I'm going to ask you guys honestly, could that plot be any simpler? Could it be any more a simple episode of Steven Universe? And I'm not saying that as if it's a bad thing. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's actually a really good thing. I love complex episodes of the show where we learn a bunch of stuff, and the characters are like, furthered by miles. But I also love these very simple message kind of episodes. While I found the overall premise of this episode to be a little odd and I had a little bit of trouble getting behind it from the start, the scene where Steven is talking to all the people of Beach City and making their lives just a little bit better was a great scene. And I already mentioned that I loved the scene between Mr. Smiley and Mr. Frowny at the end. And considering that I'm actually not a very big fan of Mr. Smiley, this episode actually did a fantastic job of making me feel for the character. I liked Garnet's involvement in the episode because even though this wasn't a big world-changing thing, she was still willing to help Steven with something he felt like he needed help with. And because of that, we actually got a very personal, very easy to understand look at Future Vision as a method for gauging the future so that you can act to change it for the better. We saw that a little bit in Winter Forecast, but it was on a very large scale and it wasn't nearly as relatable as this. Here, Steven, when he looks into the future, he sees negative outcomes for both Mr. Frowny and Mr. Smiley, but because of that, he is able to intervene in a way that it actually inspires them to come back together and start to rectify things. Also, briefly, I want to bring attention to a scene between Lars and Sadie in this episode. Even before Steven talks to them as Zoltron, you can already tell that the events of the new Lars have affected Lars in a positive way. He is the one seeking to spend time with Sadie now, and neither one of them shows any aggression towards each other or any desire to brush the other side as we have seen Lars do to Sadie in the past. It definitely seems like their relationship has taken a turn for the better. And considering that I'm someone who has never really liked Lars because of the way he treated Sadie, seeing him improve this way makes me feel so much better about the character. And Actually, some of the positive feelings I've had for the characters since the new Lars seem like they're going to be carried over into future episodes, and I couldn't be more excited about that. And finally, I want to talk about that scene at the end between Mr. Smiley and Mr. Frowny. That is the big scene in this episode. I feel like it's the one that deserves the most attention. They are old friends and old colleagues. One of them behaved in such a way that it drove the other away, but he was unwilling to talk to the other about it. And now, after years, they have finally come back together, and they're finally communicating again, and it looks like they might be able to renew their friendship, if not their professional careers in some way. But in the typical way that the show handles writing complex layers, their entire relationship as portrayed in this episode could also be one of a couple which had a falling out and is only now starting to reconcile. So you're going to have people who are relating to these characters on three different levels. People who have had a falling out with their colleagues and might want to remedy the situation. People who have had a falling out with old friends and someone who had a falling out under similar circumstances with a romantic partner. And I'm not saying these characters are or ever were romantically involved. I'm just saying the writing is there. There is a layer to the writing which makes these two characters relatable to people who have found themselves in a similar situation with someone who they are romantically involved with and who might see these two beginning to come to terms with their past and start to remedy the situation who might feel inspired to do the same, who might have wanted to do the same thing 
for quite a long time, and this is what pushes them to make that attempt. In fact, I've been thinking about it lately, and ever since Here Comes a Thought in Mindful Education, I've kind of realized that of all the strengths of this show, the one that is the strongest, the one that I feel is the most noteworthy, is how easily they're able to convey multiple meanings in their dialogue, in their storytelling. It really is a talent and a treat to watch. All of that said, though, what did you think of this episode? Let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below. Either way, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later.